L-O-U multi Merovingian malt mate, yeah. <clears throat> and thank you to um, Tartan Koo for the malt mention. Welcome. I uh, better put this down while I'm welcoming you so I don't drop it, but I'll be pouring some shortly. Welcome to Ralphie Review 1053 here in the Bothy. And before I go any further, uh, this is my first review since the Online Scotch Whiskey Award live stream on November the 2nd from 6pm to 9.30pm GMT. Um, thank you to everybody who showed up for the live stream and who have sub who subsequently watched the live stream. And in particular, thank you to all our guests who made an appearance from the Scotch whisky industry to claim their certificates for their, for their achievement in what is the only democratic, transparent awards system relating to Scotch whisky. It's as simple as that. And uh, a big thank you to you if you were watching the live stream and particularly if you voted, uh, because it's what, it's what it's all about. It's about our nominations, the online community nominations, creating a nomination list in nine categories. And then subsequently, anybody who's interested can vote in all or one of the categories or however many categories, so long as you have a Google email address, a Gmail address. And the reason for that is simply so we can keep in top of the algorithm and register the feedback so we know if there's any shenanigans and vote rigging going on, because that is possible and we need to know about it in the Oswas. So I'm just mentioning it in the awareness that many of you are fully aware, but some of you, you're saying, Oswas, what's that? It's the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards and you will find the link down in the description box below. Given a brief mention in the Oswas as a nomination was a very close cousin to this particular bottling. The brand is called Old Perth. <clears throat> the reason I'm reviewing this in this review is my last two reviews were widely available, very accessible, supermarket shelf, single malt Scotch whiskies. This is different and it really is a classic indicator of not just the diversity of flavours across the Scotch whisky catalogue, but also the way that Scotch whisky is presented to the world. In this instance, it's a blended Scotch, but it's not a blended traditional Scotch, which is a combination of single malts and grains. This is a blended malt. It's a malt blend. It is a combination of various malt whiskies from different distilleries, because if they're all from the one distillery, it would be a single malt. But it's a malt blend, a blended malt. And it's been bottled at 56.2% and it's unchill filtered and it's natural color because it says so. Now, where does it say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, as always, I, I, I've, I've done my research, but I'm thinking, hang about, where did I read it? Where did I read this, that it's unchill filtered natural colour? If I don't see, see it on the on the label, I'll, I'll see it in the box. Here it is in the back of the label. Um, right. What it says in the back of the label is limited edition to 7,800 bottles, confirming it's a small batch. When we go to the box, at last, it says non-chill filtered, no added colour. And when they say no added colour, they mean no E150 caramel colourant. Um, this is produced by a company called Morrison's. The former owners of Morrison's Distilleries who own Bowmore, um, but they now own Clydeside Distillery. 
and they have an independent bottling company and some strong contacts. So this is exactly the sort of bottle that you won't see in a supermarket. You're unlikely to see an Amazon, but you will find when you go into a specialist liquor retailer. This is a whiskey shop anywhere in the world where they do their homework and get little batches, maybe no more than half a dozen bottles of a particular whiskey that you quite simply you'd struggle to see anywhere else. So here we are, natural colour. Why? This has been a combination of butts and hogsheads of different single malt and all the con casks previously contained PX Pedro Jimenez, super sweet, super treacly, sherry. It's as simple as that. So what you have is a splendid example, which when you do your research, you do your Sherlock Holmes with your steampunker across the internet and you go, oh, that review says recommends it and this review recommends it and this is what Serge has to say about it in Whiskey Fun and this is what the, the consensus says about it in Whiskey Base and um, this is what they say about it in Whiskey Notes. So, and this is who's recommended it in my local whiskey club or in my local whiskey club forum or just in the forum, even if I'm not in the member of the whiskey club. So it's one of these whiskies that if you're starting out, you're just going to tend to ignore. But over time, when you're looking for something genuinely interesting of quality and you discover that it is highly rated, then you look at the price and ask yourself, is it worth the price? Now, I think it is worth the price. I paid just under £60 for this bottle, and that's in the UK prices. So a big chunk of that is just going automatically in tax to His Majesty the King. Right? But why did I pay that money? What am I getting? Because it's non-age statement. See, non-age statements, it used to be just a pseudonym for underaged whiskey. Right? unless you really knew your stuff. But these days, there's more combination of older whiskies and younger whiskies to create something genuine interest because companies like Morrison's know that it's not a tourist that's going to buy this. It's not someone that's going to buy this to see in the new year at a kind of tartan party somewhere anywhere. This is a sort of whisky that isn't going to sell until it's picked up and spotted by the genuinely whisky curious. And that's us. So what have we got in the nose? Let's deep dive it. Let me, here in this channel, the Whisky Bothy, just add my little bit of input to help you in the future doing your searches. A splendid ripe. That's the first word that comes to me as I nose this is ripe. Not sweet, not even sherried. It's just really ripe apples and pears and, and grilled banana. It has that classic nutty fruitcake note that you get in a traditional Scottish dish called black bun. Black bun is basically compressed raisins wrapped in a layer of short pastry, dusted with a little bit of caster sugar. That's what black bun is. You don't see it so much now because it is incredibly calorific, which is exactly what you want in the old days in a northern country when you didn't have any central heating. No? It's your tummy's the central heating, particularly when they layer up the fat. And this is these old, these old Scottish um, puddings and, and such. They're, they're exactly made for that with suet, proper suet and lard. None of your margarine nonsense. Oh, no, no. And that's not the old school way. Let's go back to the nose here. It's settling down. It's becoming a little bit more earthy. Now, this is what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for savoury notes. I'm looking for aged casks of the traditional style. And I know from my forensic that that's the sort of casks that appear in the old Perth brand. I've bought old Perth in the brand, so in the past. Um, because I've bought the 12 year old, I've bought the 30 year old, you know, when I had a 
when it was very, very, very affordable. Uh, and in fact, it was a bit of a bargain and pff, didn't hang about. Went and bought a bottle. Absolutely beautiful whiskey. So what you're finding is that the range, particularly more recently, has been dependable and reliable. Um, so when we taste it, uh, are our expectations upheld? Resinous, citrusy, rich, intense, sharp, syrupy, loads of... This is basically, you've set up a bar barbecue and you've put the chestnuts in the barbecue beside the roast apples and the tin foil that have got raisins in them and then you've got bananas baking in their skins and then you suddenly get a big waft of the smell. Um, absolutely delightful. Excellent first taste, not too nippy. What does that tell you? That despite the high alcohol content, there has been comprehensive proactive maturation from the casks, which is rounding off and generating complexity. Complexity for the delivery of the experience. I've added about just under five millilitres of water. That'll do for starters. If I need to add more later, I will add more later, but there's no rush. The slower we go, malt mates, the further we get. Excuse me, I hope, I'm, I hope you're not being put off by the fact that one of my lights is now flickering in the studio. I'm noticing it, but I'm not noticing it on the screen that's recording here, so I'm just going to push on with the, with the review. It's a, a wardrobe malfunction, but hey, it, we're, we're used to this in this channel. There's no fancy editing going on here. There's just a little bit of fancy slow rolling of the glass just to help gently oxidize and awaken this blended malt, or what I prefer to call a malt blend. What are the malts in this? It's hard to say, because it's a sherry monster. The malts are very well integrated into the active and my goodness, they are active PX sherry casks. So you're getting a, a rich, sweet whiskey, uh, not just dominated by sweetness. There's a lot of the sensations challenging that sweetness, which of course makes it far, far more interesting. Back to the nose. More earthy, more sort of Dunnage warehouse style, more slight savoury, slight umami. The richness of the sherry is, seems to be less sweet on the nose now. It's kind of rounding off a little bit and I'm noticing just the beginnings of a little bit of scotch mist appearing in that glass. It's really kicking alive in the you think the sweet's going to hold on and dominate, and it doesn't. It's becoming much more sherbetty, citrusy. At the moment, I'm finding you've got this luscious, and I'm picking my words carefully here, this luscious malt assimilated by a really heavy cask influence. But for whatever reason, the sensation range, sour, sweet, sour, salt, so well, less salt, sweet, sour, slight bitter and a little touch of savoury is prominent here and it's making this a real decent old style old school style of single of blended blended malt um if this was a single malt with an age statement i honestly believe it would be at least twice the price but it, this is designed not for collectors, it's not designed for brownie points, it's designed to sell to the enthusiasts who doesn't want to be disappointed because if they are disappointed, they'll never buy the brand again. And the producers know this. So let's go back, one final taste before the malt, Mark. Mm. 
This is predominantly young single malt. I'd put it out seven or eight. The citrusy, almost brulee note suggests, say for example, Crag and Moor um, or Altmore's That sort of style of single malt. Benrinus is another good example. But it's hard to pick them out because such is the energy, the real proactive energy coming from these deliciously clean, fresh, highly expressive and really good quality Pedro Jimenez casks. Very much, I'm so glad I bought this. I'm gonna add another spoonful of water. Okay. I know what you think. Ravi, you're drowning it. No, no. I'm saving my palate, malt mates. I'm saving my palate so I can cut through the alcohol to really taste the complexity of flavour. Uh, so a little bit more scotch mist pre creeping in there. It's happening quite slowly. That's fine. It'll develop because it has when I've been doing my research. Very important, the research. Final taste. Add more water, gets even more citrusy. It's almost like sherbet tobacco notes, real old school tobacco notes. Wonderfully expressive. Very glad I bought this. Happy to review this. What am I going to give it? I'm going to give it the same mark as I gave, I'm going to give it a pretty generous mark actually, 84 out of 100. And some of you will be saying, hey Ralphie, seeing your last review, uh, 1052, you, you gave basically a Glenlivet, a supermarket Glenlivet, the same mark. Uh, what's going on here? I mean, this is unchill filtered, it's natural colour, it's cask strength, uh, there's a lot less of it, and yet you're giving it an equal status with a supermarket bottle from Glenlivet? And the answer is yes, because they are very different whiskies. But what I'm assessing is my experience based on expectations and value. That's the way I'm assessing it. So very, very different whiskies, but both delivering in their own very different way, real solid, good value um, results. Now bear in mind that when I reviewed the Glenlivet, it was half the price, less than, but, but yes, basically half the price of this bottle. Half the price. It's still a, a good whiskey, despite the fact that it was chill filtered and reduced to 40%. I could see the quality of the the maturation, and I'm seeing the same thing here, malt mates, but in a different way, different style. And this is part of the complexity of whiskey. And don't think for one minute, someday that you'll open a, up a bottle and say, this is the best bottle of whiskey I've ever discovered and it will always be the favorite for the rest of my life. Because I'm here to tell you that never happens. It just doesn't. See you soon.